Hello, I'm Steph and I have a rescue Robroski called Pearl. I've posted two videos on her enclosure. This is the third enclosure video which started with a deep clean and the decision to go half and half with sand and soil and bedding. Robroskis are also known as desert hamsters because in the wild they are found in deserts and habitats such as dunes, savanna, grasslands. So the first thing I did was of course take Pearl out of the enclosure and put her into a small travelling enclosure with lots of bedding and some food. I removed all of the accessories from the enclosure I then emptied the bedding from the enclosure and saved some of it to put back with the new bedding so that there would be some familiar smells. I swept up the sand and soil and gave the base of the enclosure a wipe clean. I used water for this and then I dried it thoroughly. After putting in the tallest platform and stilts, I began to fill one half with bedding but gave this a gradient so that Pearl could climb up to the top platform or so. And then I put in a layer of soil and some sand and set up the accessories. I then put Pearl back and left it for an evening. I got a little bit of footage and then left her to enjoy herself and the next day I had a look at what she had explored during the night. And it was interesting to see that she had dug a few holes in the sand in a couple of the corners and next to one of the boxes. One of the key things about sand is that you can see the tiny Robrowski footprints in it. And the sand is about four centimeters deep, as you can see here, just in case you were wondering. But I decided I wasn't fully happy with the new setup, so I rearranged it a little bit more. I moved the dig box on top of the multi-chamber hide. Now she has so much sand, she probably doesn't need a dig box but it's another place for her to explore and another hide, so I left it for that reason. I also made sure to leave the two entrances, exits in the multi-chamber hide, as this is where she sleeps. I then dug an area for the wheel. I wanted the wheel to be right by the sand so that if she falls out at all, she can land on the soft sand without a drop. And so she can also easily access the wheel as this is where she spends most of her time. I also didn't want anything near the wheel so that there is nothing hard in the way if she does fall out. As it is sand, I wanted to change the theme slightly and use the cactus hide and bowl that I have. I relocated the pathway to the cactus house and added some moss also. I also added a small toadstool hide to the top of the dig box as an additional hidey place and to block the hole in that side of the dig box. And I added the cork log to the desert area. I also added some more organic sprays. In the other half of the enclosure, I put the large toadstool hides that Pearl would have a hideout on that side of the enclosure also. And the willow tunnel is still half into the bedding to encourage burrowing and it's underneath the large sandblasted grapevine. So I wanted to add different layers and different places for her to run and hide behind and explore. Actually, research shows that burrows are most effective at one metre or more, so I wasn't expecting Pearl to be able to create burrows in the sand, and that's why I wanted to leave a good amount of bedding so that she can still burrow. I'd love for her to be able to create proper burrows in sand in a more natural way, but for now I wanted her to have at least half an enclosure of sand and half with bedding that she can burrow in. And that's it for the enclosure for now, so let me know what you think. Here is some footage of Pearl exploring it. And the next morning I saw that she had done some more digging in the sand, so I think that she's really enjoying that sand area. Thank you so much for watching, don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in another video.